Hi, my name is Alex with Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be comparing Jira software versus Jira service management. If you've ever wondered what's the difference, how do I know which one I got to use, then this is going to be the perfect video for you. Now, unlike my other JSM versus other products comparisons, this was actually going to be pretty fair. I love both products equally, and so I'm not going to be throwing any shade in one tool over another, but rather I'm going to try to educate you on the use cases, on why you're going to want to use this product over the other product, and we're going to take a look at a couple of different factors to help you make the right decision. Do you get many customer requests in languages that your agents can't speak? Then language translations for JSM by our good friends over at Resolution is the perfect app for you. It allows you to leave a great impression on your customers without having to hire folks to speak every specific language that your customers speak. Check it out in the marketplace. And oh, by the way, there's a 20% discount in the description down below. So make sure you use that when you start your trial. Now, if you want a completely free way to support the channel, super, super easy for you to do, all you need to do is click on that subscribe button. Click on that little like button, and most importantly, make sure you leave a comment. Add a hello, a thank you, a question, a comment, a concern, whatever it may be. Let me know down below, as that really does help this channel grow. Now, let's jump into the tool. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is when you go to create a project, you are presented with your project templates. In the very, very first place that you see the difference between Jira software and JSM happens to be here. Now, software development is Jira software. Okay, now why do you want to use Jira software? Well, you want to use Jira software if you are an agile team, and that is, you're a team that wants to track either in a Kanban methodology or in a Scrum methodology, again, both Agile, but it, depending on which of those uh, frameworks you want to use, you're going to pick either Kanban or Scrum. Now, if you're an Agile team, this is the only templates, the only two templates in all of Jira that are going to be appropriate for you. Okay, so if you're Agile, okay, I'm trying to stress this over and over, but if you're Agile, those two are going to be the only ones and Jira software is the only product from Atlassian that you're going to want to be using as an agile team. Now, if you're not an agile team, there's other products like work management and product management, but primarily we're going to focus today on comparing it with JSM or Jira service management, which is here. Now, when we click on the service management templates, you'll notice first, we don't have any Kanban. We don't have any Scrum. So that implies that if you do go the route of service management, your intentions are not to be agile. Okay. So you are not going to get sprints. You're not going to get epics. You're not going to get story points. You're not going to get all that agileness in a service management project. The service management project, the easiest way and the best way I like to describe it to folks is these kind of projects, these templates are designed for people that are kind of running like a help desk. If you have some sort of a, a system where you're receiving a lot of information, a lot of signals coming in, and then you got a team that needs to do something with that work, but again, you're not following Agile in any way, shape or form, then the service management project might be for you. But really, it's designed for teams that are, again, trying to create like a, a help desk type of situation. So think of a very technical or IT type of situation. Now, when you do create these projects, they're going to be very, very different. And once you have projects established and created inside of Jira, you're going to be able to filter on them. So if you ever go to your projects, view our projects, you can actually click right here under Jira projects and you'll see that even at last year, breaks them up into the four different products that are available for most teams. Now, the only one not pictured here is Jira Align, and that's because I don't have like $100 million to invest into Jira Align. But the other ones, the Jira Product Discovery, Jira Software, Jira Service Management, and Jira Work Management, they're all going to show up here. So if you click on Jira Service Management, that's going to show you only your service management projects. And as you can see here, these are your service management, it tells you the type. And then if you pick the other one, if you pick Jira Software, then that's going to show you your Jira software. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm going to open up a service management project. 
And I'm going to open up a Jira software project just to kind of show you the differences. And I'm going to be toggling between the two. So do feel free to pause this video and kind of really observe and, and, and digest what's going on so that you can follow along carefully. Now, before we even get that far, though, I do want to address an elephant in the room. In my opinion, the biggest differences, right? Obviously, agile versus non agile is going to be a huge, huge critical factor. But I made a statement that I want to come back and echo it a little bit more, right? So if you're an agile team, 100% without a shadow of a doubt, you are going to be using Jira software because that's the only place you're going to have your boards, your sprints, your epics, right? Story points, all that jazz. But if let's just say that in the off chance that you're not an agile team and you're like, hey, Alex, I just want a tool to track work and I am receiving a lot of signals. I'm going to have a lot of people creating tickets or, or things that you need to be tracked. Well, Jira software might be overkill. So you're looking for the next best alternative. Well, let me tell you, service management is probably not going to be that next best alternative. And and the way I can summarize this the, the most eloquently is let me show you what it does to your purse. Let me show you what it'll do to your wallet. Because when you go and compare, and I'm just going to do Jira software pricing, you're going to notice that when I click on this link here, and we go and take a look at our Jira software licenses, at least in the United States, it's $7.75 a user for the standard. $15 for premium, and this gives you all the bells and whistles, right? But if you just want to like, hey, I just need Jira, I got I got 11 people or more, and I just need I just need to get into Jira. Well, $7.75 as of this recording, again, it goes up every October, is your price that you're going to be paying. Now, contrast that with Jira service management pricing. And when we go click on this one, you'll notice that the price is significantly more. So just to get started, we're looking at $21, 47 for all the bells and whistles. Now I've already done a video where I compare all the pricing, so I'm not going to be giving you a deeper look into JSM pricing. You're gonna to wanna to check out that video if you do. But just notice that there's a significant price difference between Jira software and Jira service management. Now as an added bonus, I'll do Jira work management pricing. Because if you're a non-technical team, right? If you're just a team that you're like, you know what? I'm not ready. I don't need the Jira, again, Jira software is just overkill. Well, five bucks, <laughs> that's all it costs for up to 35,000 users for Jira work management. And we'll do a future video. And so make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you drop a like on this video because we'll do a comparison with Jira work management in the future. But Jira work management is probably going to be what you're looking for because service management is not. So with that, let's go back and kind of compare now features and functionalities between the two. Because again, most people do confuse these two projects. And fortunately, they can't talk to each other. Fortunately, Jira software and Jira service management are designed to kind of work hand in hand. And I'm going to show you a couple of tips here. So going back, this is my Jira service management project. And how can I tell that I'm in a service management project? Well, the easiest way, the most obvious way, is if you look right here in the top left corner, this is going to say service management. When we are inside a software project, well, guess what? It's a software project. That's the easy one. Next, we're going to have a board. As you can see in the software project, we have a board with our timeline, our backlog, our active sprint, our agile reports, right? That is all included with the software project. When we go look at our service management project, and I click back to project, you're going to notice that we don't have a board. We don't have sprints. We don't have backlogs. We don't have any of that stuff, but rather we have again, a help desk friendly view. Your help desk is going to have a queue. They're going to have an ability to see just a laundry list. This is a very chronologically ordered list of every request that's coming in and all the requests that are being done get dropped off. And so this is just a very simple, push and pull type of system where as team members, as your customers submit support requests, they're going to show up in the queue. Your team will then take an item from the queue, solve the problem, or go to the next one. Again, very help desk type of thing. You're not doing any pre-planning. You're not doing any refinement. You're not doing any grooming. You're not doing any of the agile things. You're just simply have a list of items, a queue, and you're just working off that queue. Okay. And that's, that's simple. That's, that's all it is. Remember, if your agents need to engage in conversations with customers that don't speak their native language, you can make everyone's lives easier with language translations for JSM. 
And it's not just about the translations. You can build cues for customers by language or simply automate assignments so that your specific language speakers are automatically given that specific ticket based on their specific language. Check it out in the Atlassian Marketplace and don't forget that there's a 20% code in the description down below. The other thing that you get is the ability to input issues into Jira. In a Jira software project, we typically hit the create button here. We, we can create issues from the timeline. We can create issues from the backlog, right? We have a couple of different options to create issues. But in service management, you're also gonna be able to hit the create button, right? So if I hit the create button here, you can see that I'm in this general service management project. I can create tasks, but you'll notice that my issue types are different. Gone are the epics, gone are the stories. And instead we have like questions and incidents and tasks and stuff like that. But the other major difference and probably the biggest selling point as to why you want to use service management over anything else is that you have this ability to raise a request here. And when you do this, when you click on this, this is a link that you can give out to people. This is a link that folks can go on the internet and depending on your settings, right? You want to talk to your Jira admin to help you configure this correctly, but literally anybody within your company or even customers or just the internet in general can then submit requests. And so this is a very easy way, no license required way of being able to expose or get information from your customers, from your clients, from, from your vendors, whoever it is, people can come in without you having to pay for a license. And I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people can then just give you input. And that, my friends, is really where JSM shines because in Jira software, every person has to pay to play. So if you, anyone needs to create an issue, the only way that you're gonna be creating issues in Jira software is through a paid user, okay? <clears throat> now, in Jira service management, you only have to pay, even though it's a much more expensive fee of $21 or 47 or whatever those two prices were, even though you got to pay those higher prices, but you're only paying them for the individuals that are going to work these requests. But for everybody else, the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people that are going to be interacting with those agents is what uh, um, Jira calls them, then they're free. You don't need a license for them. And so this is really where the biggest advantage is in Jira service management over Jira software is that you basically have like a stakeholder um, license, which is completely free in JSM. So you can get creative here. You can, you can get your creative juices flowing here because you're not restricted to use JSM as a help desk tool, but rather as an intake form, right? And so now you can kind of get a lot more capabilities out of your tools because now you can expose a URL, you can expose a portal to, to your vendor, to your clients, to your partners, whoever it is, customers, and then things can come in and you can move those things, those items that came in into Jira software. And now your team can be agile with that information, right? And so a lot more opportunities open up when you come over the JSM route, but JSM is going to be the tool that you're going to want to be in in order to kind of facilitate that catalyst or that entry point into your ecosystem of Atlassian products. Now, besides that, right, besides the fact that we just have like a unstructured, well, it's not really unstructured, right? But we just have a queue. We don't have a board. We don't really rank things and stuff like that, right? But you get your queue. You get the ability to raise a request. You also get a knowledge base so you can essentially expose Confluence pages. I do have a video on that as well. So there's an ability for you to expose and, and, and allow your customers and your stakeholders to come in and read articles in Confluence for free without, again, needing to pay a Confluence license. Um, you also get service management metrics and reports. So based on workload, satisfaction, request, resolve, stuff like that. So you're, this is, again, really catered towards help desk type of situation, but you're going to have a, a pretty interesting tool um, that allows you to, again, it's more expensive at, at the user level, but that stakeholder license is worth its weight in gold. And you can also do things like approvals. Now I have a dedicated video again on how to set approvals, so make sure you go check those out as well. But you can do an approval workflow, you can do change management. If you pay for the more expensive version of JSM, which I don't have, but you also get advanced escalation and you also get um, asset management, which uh, I'll try to demo in future videos. So again, make sure you are subscribed and make sure you drop a like in this video if you wanna hear about that or and or let me know in the comment section down below. 
But yeah, as you can see, this is just not going to be your typical Agile tool, right? So if you're looking for a tool to kind of manage either requests that are coming in, or you are actually trying to run like a help desk, right? Maybe, you, maybe you're maybe you using JSM to track deployments of, of IT assets in your company, right? Maybe when, a, when you onboard an employee, you're like, here's a computer, here's your laptop, here's a request, right? Uh, or maybe you're a Jira administrator and you're like, hey, I hate ServiceNow <laughs> and uh, I obviously need to support Jira and people are asking for Jira customizations, help, questions. Well, eat your own dog food, use JSM and and let people you know use Jira to help you ask those questions and, and get that level of support. So that's kind of the biggest differences, right? Obviously it's gonna be pricing and obviously it's gonna be functionality, but what it's what is cool is that those issues are still an issue. And as you can see from the interface, this still looks and feels like Jira. And so you're not going to have to retrain your teams. You're not going to have to like do a whole lot of like learning curves here because if you already know how to use Jira software, then JSM is going to fit right nicely. And if you have a Jira administrator, your Jira admin for Jira software is going to f again feel really at home in JSM because it's pretty much all the same stuff. You still have like your same project settings, obviously different options, but it still looks and feels almost exactly the same. So that's it for this video. Again, the, the key takeaway is do you need a, an intake because if you do then JSM is going to be the right way if you need an agile workflow or if you need an agile uh, board or sprints or story points then obviously Jira software is going to be the right tool for you but I do recommend you at least go in and try out JSM and, and see if it works for you see if see if it does the right thing but just be very very cautious right the pricing differential if you make a mistake is going to be significantly different because paying you can get basically three uh, users in Jira software for the price of one agent in Jira service management. So keep that in mind as you explore. Getting tickets in Arabic, Chinese, or Spanish? No problem. With language translation for JSM, your agents will engage with your customers as if they were natives. Simply install the app from the Atlassian Marketplace and define your project default language and go. Oh, and while you're doing that, make sure you check out the description down below because our good friends over at Resolution have provided us with a 20% discount that you can use when you sign up for language translation for JSM. Don't miss this chance as they only have a few left. And that's it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do make sure you support the channel by subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get value, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need